Hey guys, welcome back. Finally bringing you my final Drogon video. Um, I'm not going to go through the entire thing in huge detail. It was just such a huge project. So i uh, sort of go through the steps that I did and uh, how I made it and stuff. So stay tuned. And if you already haven't checked out my other two videos of um, sculpting all of the heads and uh, that's the top part of the head and both jaws, um, I can link it in the uh, description box down below and definitely check those out before you watch this video just so you understand the entire process. So that first video will go through uh, the entire sculpting process of the head um, in great detail. So um, if you're interested in that, check it out. And the second video is um, all of the painting on the head. Uh, this video has a little bit of painting um, for the uh, remaining bits like the, the claws and stuff. Um, but yeah, check out the second video for the painting uh, just to see how I painted it all up and some tips and stuff as well. So the remaining parts were the claws, so I'll just go through um, some of the parts that I needed to paint. So these are the two uh, feet. Um, I had to sculpt and mould two different uh, sides of the claws just so um, that thumbnail was on the right side. So you can't just make one um, generic foot, you have to have the two uh, left and right feet to have it um, realistic. So um, I painted a lot of layers on this. So I started out with the orange layer um, for the skin, I uh, waited for that to dry and then I went ahead and painted the nails with a yellow undertone um, and then shaded it in with some darker browns and blacks. And then I went ahead and um, applied a brown layer on top of that orange. Um, I watered it down a little bit just so it gets in all of the crevices um, that I wanted to get in. I wanted to leave a bit of the orange seeing through so um, I watered that down. And then the second, the third layer is uh, a black as well and I used sort of a dry brush for this just so it left all the crevices uh, with that brown and orange in between. And these little parts are the little claws on top of Drogon's wings. Um, so again, I only had to make one mold for this uh, because there's no left or right. Uh, and the way I designed it was I could um, pose it how I wanted to. So I only really needed to make one of these, uh, which is great for silicon cost wise. Uh, so I painted up the same as the claws. And then I moved on to making the tail piece. So I sculpted this out of monster clay I then made a mold of it with some silicon and, and I cast it in resin. So this is the resin piece once I have cast it. Um, it turns out white so that's why it's white and I did cast it with the posable armature inside it. And um, as Dragon's tail is black and red, I went ahead and painted just a solid black tail with the red outlines. I didn't bother to um, do any undertones or anything uh, just because it wasn't as... Um, it didn't have that much undertone as what the claws did, so I just went ahead and just did it solid black anyway, so it matches the fabric that I chose for it. And this red colour is a custom colour that I made, so I didn't use any sort of red that was out of a bottle, um, because it wasn't really the red that I wanted, I didn't have it, so I had to custom make it. So once that is dry, I then seal it with some Liquitex Matte Medium. So this is the fabric I'll be using and it is a fake crocodile skin um, and it has like a fluffy background um, so and it is a little bit thinner than uh, the thick crocodile skin. I wasn't sure whether it would go through the sewing machine that I have so I got the thinner version um, and it is quite flexible and quite bendy so uh, it really easy to work with so it kind of opened a bit more opportunity for um, this fabric to use on other dolls like like some dragons and stuff so um, yeah it's really good fabric and I have a whole lot of different colors so um, I expect to do another dragon uh, in the future and I used a thicker thread for this so this is an upholstery thread um, it is a lot thicker than regular thread um, as you can see how thick and strong it is I found this really useful for Drogon as you can see here is a smaller thread that I usually use on all of my other dolls um, and you can see how much thinner it is if I can actually get it that is you can see how much thinner it is uh, so the 
upholstery thread is roughly two times the size of it and um, yeah really really strong so I wanted to keep it really stable as well I didn't want anything splitting apart so this fabric I'm using to make all of Drogon's uh, little fin bits on top of his neck and stuff and I also used it to make his wings so it's like a fake uh, suede um, it's like a microfiber I think it was called butter, butter suede or something I think um, and it is a nice um, red color and right now I have drawn out the fins for uh, around the neck um, and I'm just cutting them out and I have actually attached two sides of this butter suede together using some webbing um, and that way it uh, keeps it together nice and securely rather than gluing it and having like clumps and stuff around um, and then I moved on to painting some details onto these fins so originally I was going to make them wired but um, I just thought it wasn't really worth it because it was a bit stiffer once the butter suede was stuck together with the webbing so I didn't think it would work uh, quite well with the armature inside it anyway so I just thought it was a waste of time so I opted not to do that. So uh, I'm going to do an overview of the wings once I have made them. So again I didn't record this bit because um, it was sort of an experiment and really hard to capture. So this is what I was left with. Um, it Again it has a wire armature in it so it is fully poseable. Um, the little claw on the top is attached with um, some of that um, faux crocodile vinyl that I um, sewn together and you can pose it really well uh, and then I just opened up um, where the arm bits are and added some stuffing into it so some polyfill and it is also uh, fully posable as well and it's all stuck together using that same webbing so once I've done this I added some uh, airbrushing color to it so I have a couple of airbrushing videos back on my channel so be sure to check it out um, I'll try and link it down the bottom so I added a lot of detail with that airbrush including some shading around uh, the bone parts of the wings and just where the black pieces will match up with the red and also added quite a bit of veining uh, just to give it that more realistic look and I'm thinking about doing Viserion, the undead Viserion, um, and um, doing some holes in wings and stuff. But I'm not sure if I'll do that because I can't really have uh, two of these dragons lying around. So a little progress shot of what I was up to at this stage. So I'm sort of patterning the body um, and attach all the armature together with the head and everything. Um, and attach the wings to the armature as well. This was... Uh, it's so hard <laughs> to do uh, and so time consuming to work out um, all of the patterning for the body and the armature and everything and it's still not 100% uh, so definitely this guy won't be for sale uh, in case anybody's wondering but I do plan on making another one that will be for sale of not of Drogon of something else um, and I just wanted to get the uh, body right before that happens or anything so this was sort of a prototype model um, before I sold anything because I didn't want to sell anything that wasn't 100% to anyone um, and you can see he's quite big he's ginormous um, he's probably the size of a small Labrador and we have a kitty cat investigating Drogon she's always getting in on the action <laughs> anyway so um, I opted for some um, of that padded polyfill stuff uh, over the stuffing that I usually use just so I could shape it out a bit more um, and oh yeah you can also see how the tongue works as well so uh, I, I really want to do it in the future add some like flames or something to his mouth um, so I haven't glued that in yet so uh, I hope to do that in the future. So once everything was sewn up uh, I could then go ahead and attach some of those um, uh, little scale wing things onto his neck um, and then I added some details with some airbrushing again uh, so a fair bit of airbrushing went into this dragon um, and it just added so much more detail than what I could get with a brush or anything so definitely if you have an airbrush use it um, now onto the little spines on the back of Drogon so I did a, two different molds with uh, various size spines um, with some leftover silicon that I had because I knew I'd have some leftover silicon uh, so I needed to do spines anyway so um, cast them and painted it up black 
and then moving on to sticking them onto the back of the dragon uh, and so I went ahead and just lined the entire spine area of Drogon because he has spines on there um, with some uh, glue that I use for everything else um, I originally used a 6 thousand or whatever it's called but I actually find it a bit crap I don't like that glue it doesn't stick what I it doesn't do what I want it to do and it has nowhere near as strong grip as what this fabric glue has it's this glue is the best uh, so if you use E6000 um, I, I don't actually recommend it I don't think it's that good I think it's very overrated uh, the dry time is way too long and um, the, the grip strength just is nothing compared to this fabric glue that I use So here's what the final version looks like um, and it's you can sort of get the scale with the 3-0 Daenerys doll that I have, that's a 1-6 scale so it's perfect size for Drogon. It was a labour of love and a huge process and I really hope you enjoyed seeing it come to life. Uh, I do hope to have one for sale soon um, so I'll keep you updated on that and it would mean the world to me if uh, you guys shared any of these videos and progress things of my Drogon I spent so much time on it uh, and I really really hope you guys enjoy it and that's it for me today guys I hope you enjoyed the video if you did give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you have any requests you can leave in the comments down below you can also check me out on Instagram and Facebook at creatures of net and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!